centers uh Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor for me to stand here and talk about uh, Kashmir and land strategy and all. And uh, uh, it's really an honor because of the galaxy of the people who are sitting beside me. It's an honor and I'm a personal fan of many of them. Uh, therefore, it's an honor to be speaking. Right. Uh, first of all, uh, let me confess that uh, the former the speakers who have spoken before me have literally taken the thunder out of my speech and because most of the things have been covered. Uh, maybe geopolitics or whatever. Uh, and uh, I have been asked to talk, I have configured my speech to talk about the threat and response with focus on land strategy. For that we have to zoom out of Kashmir and uh, talk in generic terms and the first is the geography, the geopolitical realities of Pakistan. And the senator was alluding to that, and I hope I have taken it from the Google. Uh, he quoted Kaidazam that we are going to be the best of attention, focus of geopolitics of the world, and there we are. What that means? Now, our geographical location is an asset, and it is a challenge as well. If we play our cards well, it's an asset, and if we do not play our cards that good, then it poses serious challenges and existing threat to Pakistan. Now, now, if you see on the north, uh, on the east we have India, I'll talk about India uh, later, we have, which is our uh, perpetual enemy, and likely to be so, and the things have been proven in the recent past. Then is Afghanistan, which is in a state of flux for a pretty long time, uh, with all the stakeholders having their share of the pie. And then China is emerging as a superpower. And from the Indian Ocean and elsewhere, uh, USA and the West are trying to contain. And in between is Pakistan. And this is what poses the biggest challenges to our security. Threats. I'll talk about the threat. And I will dwell on the direct military threat and asymmetrical threat also, which is also called hybrid threat, hybrid warfare. In modern times, let me tell you, I, I uh, qualify my statement here. And what India is doing is that it's focusing more on posing an asymmetrical threat to Pakistan and not the direct military threat. Because what is happening inside Pakistan, that is called the inner front. The, the enemy is trying to soften us. It's, there's a consortium of, consortium of intelligence agencies working together to harm Pakistan internally. And this is what is a greater threat than the military threat. Focusing on India, and I have intentionally, with purpose, put this photograph here, which tells you of the fascist ruling elite of India at present. Pakistan, India has always been averse to the creation of Pakistan. All those, all those intellectuals and people who think Now there shouldn't be any doubt, all those uh, talking of Aman Ki Asha and all, bear this thing in mind that India is a perpetual enemy of Pakistan and it has never reconciled to the creation of Pakistan. And if you are, we are talking about this government, this, has, this government of India has come starkly with it. But before that, they have even the, the previous governments also have always tried to belittle Pakistan. 
the present government is fascist. And what happens in fascist government? Now, if you recollect, there was a German delegation visiting USA, and uh, there was a huge gathering, the kind of gathering Mr. Modi had in India, and it supported the fascist government of Nazi's government in uh, uh, Germany. And the moment the delegation went back, uh, Germany invaded Poland. So this is exactly what Modi government has done. The fascist government, let me tell you, it is more harmful for India than Pakistan. Because this fascist, there is polar, growing polarization in India, north-south divide. Then the minorities, the Sikhs, the Dalits, Kashmiris, Palestinians. So, but what danger endangers us is the danger which they pose to us is that they would, because every fascist government like Hitler's or, or, or Mussolini, they try to expand their territorial interests. They try to expand. And therefore, we have to be very careful about that. Military infrastructure is poised. Now, if somebody comes up, uh, I had a number of discussions at the International and National Forum. They said, look, we are building against China. But if you see the <clears throat> defensive infrastructure of India, what is defensive infrastructure? It is uh, the forward air bases, the cantonments, uh, the, the military uh, 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 garrisons, all are poised against Pakistan. They are not the uh, almost 80% military might of India is poised against Pakistan. The strategic alliance with US, uh, uh, Mr. Mishai Hussain dilated on this, that they have found a uh, ally in form of India to counter China. But in the process, you know, uh, there was a very interesting juxtaposition and uh, elements that uh, India is behaving like Israel. When Israel, Israel could dictate, you know, to USA. And whatever they did, they had to accept. So therefore, strategic alliance is a reality. But we have to play our cards better. And because US, like it or not, it is a superpower. It is the, it is, it is the strongest military might in the world. So therefore, we have to play our diplomatic uh, finesse and uh, foreign relations in a manner that we have to play smartly our whatever we have, how we have to deal with other countries. I have already uh, said this and uh, uh, because Pakistan, it's raw, we know, we NDS, we know, but there are other hostile uh, or semi-hostile intelligence agencies and we are dealing with a consortium of intelligence agencies which in tandem with the fifth column trying to damper our will. Will which is very important and I come to the how it is uh, related to this, the inner front. I said earlier that they are trying to target our, they damper our will to support Kashmir to survive as an honorable and dignified <coughs> nation, to survive as we are. So our will should not happen. The problems will be over. But if we give in, we will lose the, the war forever. My troubles. Why are we in the trouble? It is so, so simply, simplistically people carry comparisons, carry out comparison. Ours, the state of affairs with Bangladesh. It had we been in one corner of the world, and had we been, uh, because simplest, simplistic juxtaposition is with another country, because every country has its own problems, has, it, has its own geopolitical reality. So why we are in trouble? First is, we are a Muslim country. And as the Prime Minister said, that there are 8 million Kashmiris in trouble in occupied Kashmir. Had there been 8 Jews or 8 Christians, things would have been different. 
This is a stark reality. Barq girti hai to bejaare musalman hoga. The, the, the lightning always falls on the Muslims, some of the other. Far potential. We, there are three countries. One, Turkey, Iran, and Pakistan with a power potential. The Muslim countries with power potential. And that's the problem with the West and the uh, other world powers. So Pakistan has problem because it has a strong army. It has a strong intelligence system. I have already covered industrial and economic infrastructure. We have done wonders. See air, weapon complex, camera. Look at Pakistan office factories. Look at our university. Look at what we have achieved. We have noble health warriors. So this doesn't figure out well that we are a Muslim country. We are a nuclear power. We are Muslim, the only Muslim country which is a nuclear power. And nuclear, I will talk about the nuclear strategy. Uh, it is something, this threat, uh, we have, we can carry out a posture. How the posturing is done? By making small statements, by carrying out missile tests, or this posturing at the advanced level could be by deployment also. But let it be, the difference is that let it be in the enemy's mind that how we are going to apply this nuclear strategy. It cannot be defined in 2 plus 2, 4. Let him be deterred. Let him think. So therefore, I will not talk much about the, but we are a nuclear power with advanced delivery systems with multiple delivery systems, which is something which is well, a wonder of the world we have done. So this doesn't augur well with the people who are trying to manage the world affairs. We are our own enemies. Now, I have talked about the threat from other countries. No power tells us not to educate our children. Nobody would tell us how to carry out social development of our people. Nobody will tell us how to, you know, carry out, uh, we are fragmented, we are not in unison, we are our own enemies. And if we are internally strong, we will be externally strong also. Then, uh, this is uh, because uh, I have seen that at such forums there are a few students of strategic studies and all. So I will just like to help to describe that. Please understand that war is a national effort. Somebody said that, you know, we can declare jihad and all, but it is a national, war is a national effort. It is not in a military affair. It is not that one service or one element can declare war. And then it comprises, I am only talking about the kinetic portion of that. That is the land forces, there is the navy, we have air force, we have strategic assets, the nuclear assets, and then we have the intelligence system. And we have wonderful land forces, navy and air force. We have assured strategic assets and our intelligence system is very robust and strong. So what's the problem? The problem is the economy. Because if you see every the pedestal is economy, we have to be economically stronger. We have to develop economically. And then we'll be able to, you know, wage a war as a national effort. When we have a begging bowl and going around trying to seek stability through the money, how can you wage a war? So therefore, we have to be economically strong to protect our country, to defend our country, and then we will be able to work for the Kashmir cause in a much better manner. And then, it is superimposed by will of the country. Will of the country will of the people of Pakistan, which must not happen.
The problems are there. Economic problems are there. Social problems are there. But then see, we have a role model like Cuba, perpetually under sanctions, but they have survived and they feel a very respectable contingent in the Olympics. They have the best doctor to patient ratio in the world. So therefore, being a poor country, being in problems, our will to fight India, to defend our country should for temple. And that should be the spirit of everyone. How do we how do we strengthen the national defense? We are talked about the will, then the economy. Just to conclude, we have to counter the fifth column and you very well understand what is the fifth column. That is we have to guard against and let's, let's focus our energies on fighting this fifth column, the media, the writers, the intellectuals and the leaders of us. Intelligence, uh, Iraq, uh, US conquered Iraq. So Saddam Hussein was bad, they should have removed it. They dismantled their military, they dismantled their intelligence and then people walk over. So please value your intelligence agencies, they are working for you. They are working because you can have a sound sleep. We had a very important point, I am a political person. I am. A, I have 40 years of military career, retired 6 years back, I am a political. We should have inclusive policies. If there is polarization, political polarization, social polarization, sectarian polarization, we will not be able to defend our country. And it is said that the goal of resolving conflict in a relationship is not victory or defeat. It is reaching understanding and letting go of our need to be right. Everybody thinks it is right, but by having internal fissures, to an extent that it becomes unremediable, we are harming our country. Uh, economy, just two more minutes. It has economy, economy and national law has a uh, relationship and it is reflected here. National defense is only possible through sound economy and your resolve. I skip this. I just tell you the land strategy, how it is. Uh, people ask me that, you know, why can't our tanks work more? Well? Why can't we do this? So for the, for the younger people it is to understand that uh, you have uh, forces which are deployed on ground. These are the holding formations. Then there are reserves which are available. And then there are strategic reserves and then there is Air Force, Pakistan Air Force and Indian Air Force. So the system of forces is such that India cannot dare to venture against Pakistan. We are there to defend you. Uh, the the tri service war with deeper objectives is not possible. One travel advisory uh, of traveling to India or Pakistan and then the insurance rates go up when the, the bugle is sounded. So therefore it is very difficult for India to raise a price of this war with deeper objectives. And uh, then is cold start strategy. You must have heard about cold start strategy, whether hot or whether cold. We are poised to beat it square and thick. <laughs> Offensive across LOC. Uh, you must understand that Kashmir, uh, I have observed that uh, most of you have seen, it is very defensive. Let, let the Indians come. They will get a bloody dose and we will go across the end. Escalation ladder because it is, why it is dangerous? Because if India goes, it comes across LOC, there will be reaction to that as was the air, by the Air Force. And then escalation ladder will not stop. And the world, world will, has, will have to intervene. Therefore, Posturing will be there. The posturing, that statement by uh, that tilted hat guy there across the border that we are going to take. I challenge him, he has to come. And then what will happen will be detrimental to the security of India itself. 
then there is a streak of irrationality and miscalculation that is always there for which we have to be prepared. In conclusion, my enemy is powerful, treacherous and domineering, imbued with the objective to defeat and slight me, powerful enemy, but not both with my tenacity and will to undo his design. As long as my will remains solid, I do not fear neither his power nor his intentions. And that's what the messenger wants to do.